Howdy, I'm Gary Anderson, one of the owners of Gary's Food Town in Laurel, Nebraska. We've been here since 1985. Daniel Lebmeyer, who worked for me for a number of years in high school and is at Northeast Tech now, asked me to do a little interview about my grocery experience. Back in 1964, I was 13. I was a freshman in high school. It was about April, about this time of year, close to it. And uh, asked my father for a couple bucks for the weekend. And he looked at me and told me he was done giving me money. If I wanted any more money, I had to go get a job. Changed the rules of the house, particularly for Gary here. And uh, had a neighbor who worked at the World Herald in the want ads. And she told my mom about a, um, one ad for a grocery clerk at a small store. It was called Cinderella Market, approximately two miles from the house. <clears throat> so I went down and asked for the job and, and was hired. Um, and some interesting things back then. There was a thing called the Blue Law and a business had to be closed one day a week. Well, all the big guns, your chains and stuff and the bigger grocery stores were closed on Sunday because it was our day of worship or the Christian day and I was working for a Jewish guy and their Sabbath is Saturday so we were closed on Saturday but I worked every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. had a half hour lunch about noonish and another one about four and that's the way life went until uh, I was a senior so I was at Cinderella Market until my senior year and in that February um, there was a fire burnt to the ground uh, pretty extensive and that into that. I went out looking and I applied at Hinky Dinky. The store originally was at the West Roads and got called and the guy said, uh, why don't you come in on Thursday? And you know, I said I kind of was hoping not to be called for two or three weeks. I wanted to be off for a bit. And he said if I wanted the job, I had to be there. So he said I'd take it. It got kind of interesting, got in and got chewed out right away because I had worn blue jeans and not slacks and I didn't have a tie with my white shirt. So they gave me a bow tie, and that's the one I wore for a number of years with Hanky Dinky. So I was there uh, right before graduation. I wasn't there two months. They asked me to go full time when I graduated, and then spent the next couple years between going to school full time, college, and working full time. So I'd tell them at work that I wanted to just be part time about 20, 22 hours a week, and before the semester was over, I'd be working 40, 42 hours a week, and the next semester I'd go part-time at school and work full-time and then I did that two three years on and off. Um, didn't complete college. I was approached one time by a manager at the West Roads and wanted to know what I was going to do in life and I told him I was going to school to teach and coach. Um, asked him why and he said well did you ever think about the grocery to business? Of course I said of course I didn't. That's why I was going to college so I wouldn't have to think about those things. And he said that uh, I had to consider it. He thought that I'd make pretty good management material. So I wasn't the best student ever um, and decided maybe I should look at the full-time gig and just make money because there was a lot of life out there to live and a lot of things to purchase and have. So I went in and asked him uh, how long he thought it would take me to make the first position and he said he thought I could do it within six months and I said put my hat in the ring and four months later I was the fourth man there and shortly after that I was a grocery manager and, and that particular location closed. Uh, didn't have enough sales on the mall is what a lot of these big stores found out was it would be better to not be in the mall, it'd be better to be across the street from the mall. Most of them across the street from the mall survived. Those that were in the mall did not. So I was transferred down to a uh, store on 36 and Q, and that's where I met my lovely wife, Charlotte. She was a checker, and she kept coming back to me when I was a grocery manager and saying she didn't have anything to do up front. And she was bored just standing there, so I'd have her face aisles and things, and that's how her and I met, uh, and then ended up getting married three kids later and owning a business, working together 24-7, we're still together, uh, was an interesting thing. Well from there, uh, I got promoted to assistant, uh, was probably, that was probably about 74-ish, and um, 
was promoted in the same store. I broke two rules in Omaha. First one was is nobody got promoted in the same store. It just didn't happen. You were moved to another store. Uh, and then the other thing was is I never spent no time in, uh, in the ghetto area or North Omaha at the time. And there were a couple of pretty, pretty rough stores there. So I don't know if it just worked out that way or they were afraid I'd get killed. I was pretty hard nosed about getting the job done and, and wanting people to work hard and, and uh, to try to make a profit. It's a job when you're in a big company. Take care of the customer and make money. So I broke those two rules. Well, I was assistant at 36 and Q for six months, and then they transferred me to Saddle Creek and Dodge, which was the biggest store in Omaha. Um, and I was there for six months, and I was promoted to manager at 84th and Center. So I was a young manager. I was probably about 25 then, so that would have been about 76, 77, somewhere in there. A um, couple of the highlights from that. First one is uh, one day I had a very distinguished gentleman walk in the store. Three-piece suit, gold watch chain, pocket watch. I mean, this this man knew how to carry himself. And he came up to the office and he asked for Gary Anderson. So I came out and said, I'm one of the original founders of Hanky Dinky. And I just want to shake the hand of the youngest manager we've had since Korea. And I walked on water for about two weeks after that, uh, just for the good vibes and feeling he gave. So I was there for, oh, about a year. Went in as an assistant manager on 60th and Ames. And in the meantime there, my wife and I had had our first son and had bought a house in Omaha and was on 60th and Ames. I was there about six months and they offered me the store in Norfolk. And I thought, yeah, and Omaha was going through a rough time. It, it truly looked like Hanks was going to go through a bloodbath with people uh, for the way the economy and stuff was. So we went ahead and moved to Norfolk. That was in, uh, started, oh shoot, it was in October of 77. And uh, we're there until about 79 or 80. It must have been 80. I got bumped over to Council Bluffs. And Hanks had gone through a very rough time and was really going through management and other people. Uh, was bounced over to Council Bluffs as an assistant. I guess what I'd say is, you know, in life everybody gets knocked down. It's not so much you get knocked down, it's what you do with it. How many times can you get back up? So going over there, I kept my manager's salary, which meant one of two things. Either they were just waiting for the opportunity to get rid of me, or they were truly looking at me to see if I had changed that much from the time I had spent in Omaha. Well, went through a couple managers there and got one in that, shoot, by when I was a manager, he was still a fourth man. But we were friendly, and he was telling me, you know, he was told to evaluate me. And he said, uh, you know, yeah, shoot, there's no evaluation to do. I was considered a pretty top-notch manager. Um, it had a little, you know, lost the attitude in Norfolk. There were just a lot of things that occurred in life. The economy, the oil embargo, uh, business went down. We had new competition in Norfolk. Um, if I had known now what I know then, I might have handled some of that a little bit differently. But that's the way life works. So from there, I was going to leave in 81, and my wife was pregnant with our third. Thought I need the insurance, so I'm going to stay until after the baby's born and we know he's healthy. Did that, so it was 82 when I left. Um, tried insurance for six months, and I couldn't do insurance. It just, I can talk to people, I can talk grocery, I can talk grapes and wine, I can talk many things. I couldn't talk insurance. So uh, we hadn't moved from Norfolk, um, and even to this day, I tell you, after being in Laurel now for 32 years, I don't even think I can move back to Norfolk. I don't want to live in the big city. This is, there's plenty to do right here. Um, so I went back to Norfolk and I started camping on Affiliated Foods, the warehouse that had supplied me for the last 32 years, on their doorstep because I knew they needed a produce buyer. So um, I hung out there, finally got hired, and was happy just to be at home and with my family. So I spent a couple years there, but I started on a Tuesday, I believe, and that Saturday I went and looked at the first store. I had a young guy that had worked for me, and 
him and his dad had put together a plan to get some people together and just buy a bunch of stores one at a time and have each person have a uh, interest in the ownership. So I did that that first Saturday, but I was had affiliated for about three years, and uh, Laurel came up. Laurel was the seventh store I'd looked at. And I have to tell you, I enjoyed buying produce, I enjoyed sitting in the office, I enjoyed going home at night and having family life and seeing my kids and helping raise them a little bit. I guess in life I'd say you want to be a square peg in a square hole or you want to be a round peg in a round hole. Either way you want to be able to fit. I think Laurel was a good fit for Charlotte and I. So in uh, February of 85, we opened up on February 2nd and uh, have gone on ever since. And the other thing that uh, the store has given us is uh, many, many good relationships. And they've been established all the way to Valhalla, New York with a gentleman that was a senior chemist with Pepsi-Cola. Uh, other stores, other owners, the people here in town, uh, through the church, many, many connections. Uh, it's just been a very worthwhile and uh, blessed thing. And thanks 